Hey guys, Jacob here from Venture Addicts. Today's tutorial will be part one of a list of Premiere Pro tricks that I have gathered the last few years. Simple tricks that you may not know or people just don't tell you about because they're so simple and so hidden. And I've gone months and years not knowing these until now. Number one is my most used and the most efficient trick you gotta know when editing and that's rendering in and out. So I have a 4K clip here from our Mavic Pro and like most 4K footage when you drag it in, it might be a little choppy when you play it. And if I were to keep building this project with 4K footage and color grading and effects, it would just get way more choppier and choppier as you go. But every few times you add an effect or change the color or anything, you can go up to sequence, render in and out, it will load it and render it for you so it will play back smoothly. Another way this comes in handy, I'll just duplicate this and let's say I want to add an effect. So when I add this, it goes red. So it's going to be very choppy when I play it back. Let's say I want to play with different effects or I want to move it left and right or whatever. I can go a little bit before, hit I for in and go after, hit O for out. And now I'm just working in this little window. I can sequence, render in and out. And then I could play back my effect and see if I like it. And it, let's say it's one frame off or something and I move it, it's going to go red again. It's going to be choppy again. Just go back up to sequence render in and out. And if you get in the habit of doing this, you'll have a more efficient workflow. Number two is one of my most frequently used keyboard shortcuts, which is clearing in and outs. There's many shortcuts in Premiere that you can easily learn by getting acquainted with the text here on the right on most windows. For example, instead of going to file, new sequence to make a new sequence, you can see it says control N here. So I can just click off and hit control N and there you go. But when I want to clear my in and out on a timeline, I right click, go to clear in and out and you can see that there isn't a little hint there. So I have to click it, but there is a shortcut. All you have to do is hit control shift X and it disappears. If you want to learn more of these hidden shortcuts, check out the keyboard shortcuts under preferences. Just go to edit keyboard shortcuts or just hit control alt K like it says there on the right. And you can look through every shortcut that exists and even customize it to your liking. So you could see if I hold down control and shift and I look at X, it says clear in and out and you can kind of play around with these and get acquainted with many more ways to speed up your workflow. Number three is clearing all markers, but not just markers on your timeline, markers on your clips. If you're not familiar with markers, all you have to do is click up here with your playhead, hit M and you can make markers on your timeline for whatever reason. You can also click on your clip and hit M and it'll make it on that physical clip. Now, if you want to get rid of the markers, you can right click and hit clear all markers or just do control shift alt M. And if you noticed it disappeared from the timeline up here, but it didn't disappear from your clips. And for the longest time, I didn't know how to get rid of these. I would right click on a clip, try to find it. I'd right click here. I didn't know what to do, but the simple solution is, is that you have to bring it back up and your source. You can just double click the video or go back to your project and you can see the markers are here. Just select this window and hit control shift alt M or right click and hit clear all markers and problem solved. Number four, I just recently discovered what it is and as embarrassing as it is, I'm so glad I realized how to use it. And that is color mats. Whenever I wanted a plain 1080 or 4K template of just white or black or just a solid color, I would go into Photoshop, do a fill layer, save it as a PNG, and then drag that into my Premiere project. And then I would have a nice solid color. And it wasn't until a few months ago where I realized you can just right click in your project file, new item, color mat, and there you go. You can make it whatever dimension, whatever frame rate you want, any color you want, black, white, red, whatever, you hit OK and you drag it in there. And even then you can double click it on your timeline, change it to white, change it to black, whatever you want. And I said goodbye to that stupid folder of templates I had saved for years. And lastly for number five is adding Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator project files into your Premiere project. So let's say I wanted to make a simple title for an intro through Photoshop. So I have a blue background here and then the text are on different layers so I can fade them in one by one or something like that. Back in the day, I would save three PNGs. I would do one of the top text, 
one of the bottom text and then one of the color, have three PNGs and then drag those into my project. But that's not necessary. All you have to do is go into Premiere, right click in the project window, hit import, double click your Photoshop file, and this window will pop up asking if you wanna merge all the layers or get individual layers or however you want. I want all individual three layers, so I'll go here, hit okay, and then it makes a folder with all three separate ones. So I can add in my blue, I can add in welcome to, and venture addicts. Then I can move this a few frames over and then have it fade in just like that. Another advantage is that you can keep the project open and make any changes you want and then save it. So let's say I wanna change this to we are, I would just hit control S to save it and go back to my Premiere file and you'll see that it automatically changed for you. The same thing goes with Illustrator files. It's a good use if you wanna add in vectors. So let's say I wanna add in this Premiere vector, same thing. I would right click in the window, import, select the logo, and there it is. And same as the Photoshop file, any changes I make here and I save it, it will apply into the Premiere project for you. So there's five Premiere Pro tricks you may not know that I wish I knew when I started out. I have a whole list of these to share with you. So if you'd like to see more, let me know below and don't forget to subscribe. The best way to get in touch with us is DMing us through Instagram or Twitter, and we'll see you next time.